So this is a biggie. We're going to take Ecamm out to Zoom. Some of you, this is the main reason you came and joined us in the Academy. Yeah, we're going to walk through this step by step. Notice that actually on my desktop here, I've kind of shoved everything off to the side a bit. Typically, if I were running this as a Zoom, I would have prepared everything in advance. I'd have scenes ready for me to go. You know, I'd have my notes so I know where I'm going if I'm doing a presentation and what I need available. I also use a stream deck, which we're coming to in a video real soon. And so potentially I could hide the scenes, I could hide the overlays, hide the camera effects. I would just always keep that sound levels open because I wanna make sure that I'm definitely selecting the right mic and it looks like it's coming through at the right volume because we're sending all this out to Zoom. But for now, we're gonna be using some of these things in a minute. I just wanna open up Zoom. I'm conscious, certainly if you're working on a um, MacBook Pro, a 13 inch or you know, even a 14, 15 inch, there's a limited amount of space. So you don't have to have every overlay open from Ecamm. You're no doubt gonna need you know, some notes open. You've got Zoom open, potentially you've got a screen open or a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so we've just got to try and organize this as best as possible. And you saw in a previous video, actually, when I was talking about presentations, how we've connected up an iPad. And actually that becomes a really good tool for running a Canva presentation straight out of it or a keynote presentation. I can just wipe through the slides. And again, this would be a great example that because there's too much going on on my desktop, I can pass that off and I can handle it in my iPad. So that's previous videos. Now, uh, let me just come to this one. We're gonna start this Zoom meeting. So I would have this one up here. I don't need to keep this one open anymore, but uh, for this video we do because I just want to walk you through a few settings. But uh, normally this would be out the way. And actually quite often, if I am on Zoom, I can put this over the top of my Ecamm window because I know that whatever's going on here is coming from that. So again, just good little tips really to help you organize this. Out of interest, <laughs> notice the color difference in my skin on there. In Ecamm, it's more natural. There's kind of a bit of a pink tint that comes over into Zoom when we do this. And I know that it's a thing because actually if we've done uh, this mirrored where it's kind of tunneling through here, it gets pinker on everyone going down. Just an interesting point. I don't quite know where that's coming from. Now let's just go through these settings and um, we're coming into the video settings. So you can see in here, it's another way of getting to this. We're getting to our virtual camera. We're gonna tick HD. I don't think you need to be using the touching up appearances using low light. Obviously it depends what camera you're using that's feeding into this. Audio the same, we wanna make sure that we've got Ecamm virtual mic. You can do a test if you want up here to check in on that one. But that all looks to me like everything is coming through from uh, Ecamm into here. So actually if I were to change over and uh, put a different scene up over this one, you can see that that's now coming through here into Zoom. Pretty cool, right? Now I am just going to put down in the description, one of the downsides of doing this, or used to be a downside of doing this, is that we're actually coming into Zoom as a camera feed. And the camera is given less resolution than a screen share. So I used to hear back from people that had done a presentation over here and they've done some, they're bringing their PowerPoint slides on into Ecamm and sharing this all across as a camera input into Zoom. And people over here in Zoom were going, we can't read it, the resolution's terrible. We're trying to be clever by coming in as a camera, but it's not giving us that resolution. Now, I'll put a note down in the description. There's actually, if you, you can link out to Zoom and uh, you can submit a support ticket, I've given you the title and the description that you need to ask them, and they will upgrade you to 720p which is what we get on Facebook typically anyway. So be sure to do that if you're planning on bringing text and graphics in because it will just increase the resolution. It's totally free if you're on a paid plan of Zoom. It doesn't apply if you're on their free one, but um, I'm assuming again that most of you are on a paid one because you don't want that thing ticking off and kicking you out of your Zoom after 45 minutes or whatever it is on the, the free one. So what can we do in here then? We're ready to go with our presentation. So really all the things that we've been talking about in Ecamm, we've gone through in previous videos, I've showed you how to do, we'll just naturally feed into this now. So yesterday we did a video on writing on screen. And so when I write 
up here on my screen. This is now coming through into, well, you can see what's happening. It's coming straight into Zoom over here. Your audience are gonna love this one. You know, if you're doing Q and A and you're hot seating maybe, and you start listing out things up here as people are saying, well, I'm struggling with this and I'm struggling with that. Okay, you're writing it down over here. Doesn't that look cool? Or as I say, if we jump across to a presentation on my iPad here, all I've got to do is drag it to the side and it goes into another app. And so if I were in Canva over here, maybe I'm, you know, while I'm here on my Zoom call, I'm just talking through and I'm demonstrating how I do this uh, over here in Canva. I want to go into a presentation. Where was the little one that we made earlier? Something like this. Let's present it. Going to go full screen. And now we're doing, you know, this again could be prepped up. So all I'm doing, I come straight from that green screen one that I was doing on my iPad. I wipe across and I'm now in a presentation here under a different scene. Just super powerful. So this is all happening over here. And as you can see on my desktop, you know, I don't need to have that Ecamm window open. In fact, I could, you know, if I'd got scenes set up on my Stream Deck, then I don't even need to have those ones open. But for now, you know, I can still see those at the side. I've just covered over my Ecamm window. That allows me to work over here and just jump between these scenes. Uh, really, really slick. Now, other things that you could be doing, again, kind of that's unique to Zoom, there's polls and quizzes over here. So uh, let's pull up the polls. Actually, let's bring the chat in as well. Again, in a previous video, I've showed you how I bring the chat on screen. And so let's just have a look at how we could do it here with some chat that were potentially going on inside this Zoom meeting. And again, this is about you prepping in advance. So let me find a scene that we've made previously. This one will do. Uh, this was done for comments. So if I clone this one down and I'm just going to call it Zoom comments and it's asking me over here. Let's, let us pull that Zoom window out of the way for a second. We're back in the Ecamm window up here. And um, what I need to do is to change this over. So when we're selecting, it's it's looking there at all the Ecamm things, but I want Zoom. And look, we've got the same options over here for Zoom when it's saying, what do I want to share into this? So let's go with the, let's go with polls and quizzes first. And look, we can now bring this in. That's gonna need a little bit of editing. Let me just get rid of that. Um, the edges I'm just going to crop that in so option just pulls in the edges but that's pretty cool isn't it that um, you know we could maybe adjust this one to fit it it's not the same size as what we had on our Ecamm one but um, I like the idea that I've been talking over here and I'll go right let's um, we've got a poll over here uh, who thinks this is a really great feature and as people are submitting it and answering so if I click launch on here Actually, we probably should have done it while it was in there. Where did we go? Zoom comments, wasn't it? So we got the wrong name on it already. So here we go on here. And as people are answering this, we can see the answers in real time. Again, really nice for people to be able to see this and work with us. Let's clone it again. In this one, we will, instead of the poll, let's go for the meeting chat. Now this again, um, because it's just carried over, we cloned it. We've carried over the cropping from the last one. I'm going to move me out of the way for a minute and just get this right. So let's come back to the edges of this and this side again. Did we crop in? Come back to the edges. Now, I probably don't want to see me at the bottom there. What I might do actually is just pull that. That's not very big, that chat over there. Let's just pull that down a bit so it's more like how I would have it. And then we can actually cut up to there. Was there anything at the top that we've cropped? Yep, let's pull that back come into there and actually I know now that that is going to be a pretty clean I can line it up in there bring me down to center on this one and um, yeah, you can play around with this however you want but uh, I might try that and then I know that as I type in here or anybody else types in here they're going to appear at the top and actually by playing around with it I realize that no we do need to have so let's send this one to the front because we don't want to lose that bit. So again, we've got another scene. So over here, we're talking about the poll. Um, comes back to me as we're chatting away and things. Um, doing my presentation if I want to. 
Uh, let's see what people think to it. Let's come to the, nopes. <laughs> uh, let's come to this one and let's see what people's comments are. And I can scroll through this. This is really powerful. Look, this is not Ecamm. That's my Zoom window. Everything you're seeing is what is the output in Zoom. And I think people will absolutely love this. I've never seen anybody doing this any other way to bring the comments on, to bring polls on. You know, you can go out. So I've got a countdown timer up here. If you decide, as it says, you want to kind of pause and go away, you could set this up. You could mute your microphone. It gives you a chance to disappear and have a break, come back in, or maybe it's a... Q&A thing or, so, or a, a time for them to fill out a form or answer a question that you just want to do. Tons of things. Basically, all of those awesome extras and features that we've been playing with in Ecamm, we're just bringing it all out here into Zoom now. If we're getting into guests and interviewing, it can start to get a little bit messy. And uh, I know some of you do this and you want to do this where actually you're bringing a guest into Ecamm. You're interviewing them, you're doing all the Ecamm features over there, and then you want to, you and the guest want to go over into Zoom. Now that works okay because we're sending the audio and the video across. Just remember that your guest who's in Ecamm can't see what's going on in Zoom. So if there's chat going on over there, I mean, yes, we could be bringing it up on screen so they could be watching it back. What you're not gonna do very easily, we do have another video after this showing you how to use Loopback, but it's quite advanced really. And it's if there's going to be problems and getting echoes and things, this is where it will happen. So if you want that and you want to be able to have a guest, if you're bringing somebody else on over there in Zoom or people are asking out in Zoom, and your guest wants to be able to hear it, then we need to send that audio back. So watch the video we've got on loopback. If not, honestly, personally, I wouldn't go near it. I don't wanna do this kind of stuff. I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. So I would just bring that guest on with me in Zoom and I would pin them on the screen alongside me. Now, that is another good point actually that I haven't mentioned is spotlighting. So you're used to either seeing a gallery view or you or anybody else that's in a meeting can pin the guest speaker or anybody else. You as the host, when I believe when you've got more than three people in the meeting, you have an option to spotlight. So instead of pinning, when you hit the little three dots next to your icon in Zoom, you'll have an option there for spotlighting. And that means that you go kind of full screen on everybody's window. Yes, they can force it back to grid if they want, but by default, everyone has suddenly, you've just pinned up big because it's really important that you do that and glad I didn't forget to tell you that because you can be doing your presentation and things over here and everyone's looking in because they haven't got you taken off of the gallery view. So that's really good practice. Spotlight, do it that way. If you want to bring a guest on, then you can spotlight them with you, alongside you. But at that point, I wouldn't really be doing a presentation because then they're taking half the screen. So maybe you do the presentation and then if you want to talk with them, you bring them on. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as slick in Zoom. We can't do all these features. There aren't buttons to be able to press on our Stream Deck to be able to spotlight or not. I wish there was, but I think that's given you uh, a taste for that. The things that you can do over here, I would encourage you, you will get a better recording out of Ecamm than you will out of Zoom because it's recording locally rather than up in the cloud. So, uh, you know, if, if it is a presentation you're doing and you're sending it out into Zoom, then I would potentially record it in Ecamm as well as recording the cloud one in Zoom. Certainly if you're planning on repurposing and using this content again. So there's some fun things that you can do. Ecamm into Zoom. I use this all the time. I never go on Zoom without going through Ecamm first. It just allows me to, you know, in its simplest form, I'm putting some branding on. I can put my name on screen and things as you've seen, but it just, uh, you know, allows me, I could potentially have sound effects and some overlays and all these different cool things that we've been playing with. I can now work with this in Zoom and people absolutely love it. So go and have some fun with this. And uh, if Zoom's your thing, you know, combining these two, all the things that you've been playing with in Ecamm, go back, watch all those videos, and then everything you're doing, you're now feeding straight out here into Zoom. Cool, right? I hope you can see the power of this. I really encourage you to master Ecamm and bring this out into your Zoom meetings and just, yeah, make some memorable presentations. So I hope you found that useful. Please do give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. If you've just landed on this video and uh, you're not that familiar with Ecamm, we've got a full playlist over here. If you really want to get to grips with it and master it, then do sign up, register to come and join us in our Ecamm 
Live Academy, where we spend two weeks together, twice a year we do it, really going through all of this, practicing, playing, no stone unturned. Come and join us in one of those, and uh, I'd love to see you in one of those other videos. Bye for now.